Chapter 3 Prime Minister and Council of Ministers Introduction In this lesson, we will learn about Prime Minister and Council of Ministers Appointment Formation of Council of Ministers Tenure Functions Policy Making Administrative Legislative Financial Emergency Position and powers of the Prime Minister Collective and individual responsibility of the members of the Cabinet Distinction between Council of Ministers and Cabinet The Prime Minister The Constitution of India provides for a Council of Ministers with the Prime Minister at the head to aid and advise the President. The President acts in accordance with their advice in the exercise of his functions. The President may require the Council of Ministers to reconsider their advice, but he shall act in accordance with the advice tendered after such reconsideration. Ours is a parliamentary form of government, therefore our President is only a nominal head of the state. Thus, the Council of Ministers, headed by the Prime Minister, is the most powerful institution in the Indian polity. Appointment the Prime Minister is appointed by the President. The President cannot act arbitrarily in this appointment. According to convention, the President invites the leader of the majority party or group in the Lok Sabha to form the government. The members of the majority party or the group elect their leader to be appointed as the Prime Minister. The President then appoints him as the Prime Minister. When no single political party secures an absolute majority in the Lok Sabha, the President may have some option in the appointment of the Prime Minister. But the President has to appoint that person who can prove that he has the support of some smaller groups or parties in order to have majority in the House. Council of Ministers Article 75 of the Constitution states that the Prime Minister shall be appointed by the President and the other ministers shall be appointed by the President on the advice of the Prime Minister. By convention, the President has to accept the choice of the Prime Minister in the matter of appointment and dismissal of ministers. Normally, only the members of Parliament are appointed as ministers. In case a non-member is appointed as a minister, he must be elected or nominated to the Parliament within six months from the date of his appointment. Failing this, he will have to resign from the post of a minister. Before 1979, the constitution did not refer to the word cabinet. It referred only to the Council of Ministers. The 44th Amendment Act provides that the president shall not issue a proclamation of national emergency unless the decision of the union cabinet, that is, the prime minister and other ministers of cabinet rank, has been communicated to him in writing. After this, the distinction between the cabinet and the council of ministers has become evident. If you want to see all the chapters in this format, then call us in the description of the number in the description. 1. Cabinet Ministers They are the most important and most important cabinet ministers. They are the most important members of the council of ministers. They hold important portfolios like home, defense, finance, external affairs, railways, etc. A cabinet minister is in charge of a ministry and sometimes of more than one ministry. Only cabinet ministers have a right to attend meetings of the cabinet. They together determine the policy and program of the government. 2. Ministers of State They are the second category of ministers. They may or may not hold an independent charge of any portfolio. The Prime Minister may or may not consult them. They do not participate in the Cabinet meeting. But they may be invited to attend meetings when matters concerning their departments are being considered. 3. Deputy Ministers They are the third category of ministers who assist the Cabinet Ministers and the Council of Ministers. They are junior ministers and are placed under senior ministers whom they have to assist. They take no part in cabinet deliberations. 
The Council of Ministers comprise the Prime Minister and a number of other ministers appointed by the President on the advice of the Prime Minister. The Constitution of India does not specify either the number of members of the Council of Ministers or classify the members of the Council into different ranks. However, the Constitution by the 91st Amendment Act 2003 has put a ceiling on the size of the Council of Ministers at the centre and in the states to 15% of the strength of the Lok Sabha and state legislatures. In the case of smaller states, the maximum number of ministers allowed is 12. The step was taken to check defections from one party to another and also to curb the government expenditure on account of jumbo size ministries. The Cabinet, Formation and Appointment Formation The Cabinet is composed of a small but important body of senior leaders of the party who are included in the Council of Ministers. They hold important portfolios and decide major policies of the government. They, being trusted men of the Prime Minister, form the nucleus of the administration. In fact, the cabinet is the pivot round which the whole administration revolves. The cabinet takes important decisions. Such decisions are communicated to the other ministers and they have to follow these decisions even though they might not have been a party to such decisions. 4. Appointment of the Cabinet The Prime Minister selects his senior and trustworthy colleagues and advises the President to appoint them as Cabinet Ministers. The President then appoints them as Ministers as per the advice of the Prime Minister. Term of Office 1. The Ministers hold office during the pleasure of the President. But the President has little power, even in this regard, because the Prime Minister and the Council of Ministers are directly responsible to the Lok Sabha and can remain in office so long as they enjoy the majority support in the House of the People, that is, Lok Sabha. If the Lok Sabha passes a vote of no confidence against the Council of Ministers, they have to resign collectively. 2. The Council of Ministers are collectively responsible to the Lok Sabha. 3. Before a minister enters upon his office, the President administers him the oath of office and of secrecy. In the oath of office, the minister swears to a. Bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India. b. Uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India. c faithfully and conscientiously discharge his duties without fear or favour, action or ill will. In the oath of secrecy, the minister swears not to directly or indirectly communicate or reveal to anyone any matter which is brought for consideration except as may be required for the discharge of his duties. 4. Every minister must be a member of either House of the Parliament or must become one within six months of his appointment, failing which he will have to vacate his office. 5. The salaries and allowances of ministers are such as Parliament from time to time by law determines. If you want to see all the syllabus in this format, then call us on the description of the description. Powers and functions of the Cabinet Administrative powers 1. Policy making the Cabinet formulates both external and domestic policies of the government. It takes decisions on matters such as defence, economic policy, security needs, President's rule in state, formation of new states, industrial policy, imports and electoral reforms. Individual ministers have reasonable freedom of action, but on all major matters, they have to consult the Cabinet. 2. Implementation of Policies Once a policy decision is taken by the Cabinet on any subject, it is conveyed to the Minister of State and the Deputy Minister of the concerned Ministry. They work out the details and pass it to the civil servants under that Ministry to implement the decision. In this way, the business of the Government is managed jointly by the Council of Ministers 
and the civil servants concerned. 3. Coordinates the functioning of various ministers. The cabinet coordinates the working of various departments for the smooth implementation of government policies. Any government policy, be it eradicating the cabinet, is the apex body consisting of ministers of cabinet rank and headed by the prime minister. The main features of the cabinet system. The main features of the cabinet system are 1. President as nominal head. The president is the constitutional head of state with the executive power in the hands of the cabinet. The cabinet, in the name of the president, formulates policies of the government, directs their implementation and is accountable for them. 2. Coordination between ministers and parliament. The ministers act as both legislators and administrators. As legislators, they attend the meetings of parliament and take active part in its debates and discussions. As administrators, they hold different executive portfolios and carry on administration of the union government. The ministers are members of parliament and enjoy the support of their party which holds the majority in the Lok Sabha. Bills moved by the ministers are normally bound to have the support of the MPs of the ruling party and are passed in parliament without difficulty. Thus, there is a close coordination between the executive and the legislature. The main features of the cabinet system. 3. Leadership of the Prime Minister The Prime Minister heads the cabinet. He determines its composition because on his advice the President appoints the cabinet. He acts as the link between the cabinet and the President. He decides the agenda of cabinet meetings and presides over them. 4. Control of Parliament over the Executive Parliament ensures Cabinet's responsibility to the people in general and to the Parliament as a whole. The methods adopted by the Parliament are 1. A vote of no confidence in the Council of Ministers 2. Rejection of a Government Bill 3. Passing a Bill opposed by the Government 4. Voting a cut in the budget. 5. Passing an amendment to a bill against the wishes of the government. 6. Reducing the salaries of the ministers. 7. Asking questions. 8. Adjournment motions. And 9. Rejecting some government measures. 5. Appointments. All major appointments though made by the President, are decided upon by the Cabinet. Such appointments refer to the appointments of Judges of the Supreme Court, High Courts, Governors of State, Chief Election Commissioner and other dignitaries. The Cabinet chooses our ambassadors to other nations. If you want to see all the chapters in this format, then call us in the description of the number. For more educational videos, subscribe to our channel Home Revise.